This is Dave Gary. During his 15 years as an underground coal miner, Dave has experienced his share of non-routine events. But one event that he was involved in is something that seems to be happening far too often the past few years. Dave, I'd like you to take us to the day in question and tell us in your own words what happened and how you felt. Well, on that day, I was a minor helper. That is a midnight shift. When we arrived in a section on a portal bus, we went to the dinner hall like usual, and the boss came in to tell us what the conditions we had for the day, for the 4 to 12 boss's report. And uh, he told us that we had a, uh, it was a retreat section, he told us that we had a push out stump and we had to move uh, across the section. So after we uh, left the dinner hall, I went over to the power center to walk the miner cable like I always did. I walked up to the, to the miner and uh, 4 to 12 shift had left a, a push out stump set up for us to go in. Boss had already run the face. The operator, my buddy, he took his gas check. I watched the cables he pulled up into the cut, threw the cable out of the way. And then uh, my buddy started to mine her up. And uh, I flagged for the first buggy to come in. He just started turning ahead and sumped in. And uh, I positioned myself in the back of the miner to the right to watch uh, the front part of the cut. And the foreman ran around to the back side to watch the, watch the roof from the back side. It was all, like I said, it was in a push out stump, so it was already, the coal was already loose and the roof was a little drippy. But he loaded the first buggy, sent him out. And I signaled for the second buggy to come in. Second buggy just got underneath the boom and he started to run the uh, conveyor, load him up. And I noticed across over top of the miner on the other side, I could see the foreman flagging me out. Well, when, when I, it was a dual thing. Whenever I saw him flagging us to pull out, I could notice the post up along my right-hand side starting to bend. So I ran up to the operator at the kitchen and tapped him. I told him, let's pull it out of there. So I grabbed the cable, and we started backing the miner out. And it's, you know, after you've done it for a while, you hear noises that maybe other people wouldn't hear. And I could hear the timber snapping. So that told me it was time for me to get out. So I dropped the cable and I started running out. But I'd, I'd yelled for my buddy to, we better get out of there now. I never, uh, I never looked back. I was off and running, and I, I ran into the boss as he was coming across from the backside. And by the time I ran into him, we heard it come in. Now, when it came in, and it, it rolled way back. It came back past through the intersection, and uh, the dust was just so thick you couldn't see anything. So the foreman asked, he said, you know, is everybody out? And uh, we counted heads real quick, and we were missing one. And we pretty much figured it had to be the operator. At that point in time, I hoped that he'd stayed in a cab, you know, and didn't get out and try to run it. So, Foreman sent one of the uh, buggy operators up to the phone to call dispatcher and let him know that we'd had a fall on the miner. 
And uh, as the smoke was clearing, the foreman and myself, we, went, we started walking up in towards the cut to see what we could see, how bad the, how bad the conditions were. And uh, as the smoke, as the, the dust cleared, you could see the boom. And then you could see, uh, I could see a big piece of slate that it fell back across the back of the canopy. But that was it. I mean, the rest of it was totally covered. I, I couldn't see anything. So, uh, we ch uh, as we were walking up towards the miner, you could see that the, the miner has, was back. The boom had cleared where the, the roof had fallen. And uh, it looked to us like the most of the, the slate that fell had hit on top of the miner and slid down and, and covered the miner that way. So we walked up to the lip where the, and uh, gave it a quick look to look for real ugly pieces, drips or whatever. And uh, we thought it was okay, you know, safe enough to stand there. And uh, we started calling for the operator, calling his name. And we called several times before he answered. And he answered, it sounded like he was far away. His voice was real, real small. We decided, you know, rather than have him wait, we'd get him out as quickly as we could. And uh, sort of threw caution to the wind. And, you know, it wasn't the best thing to do to go underneath an unstable roof like that, but we thought it would be better to get him out. So the foreman and I both crawled down underneath the boom and underneath that big piece of slate and got to him. And uh, we explained to uh, the operator what we were going to do, how we were going to try to extract him. And uh, the only way we could see that we could get to him was to take him out through the back panel on the canopy. So I reached through the, the canopy and grabbed him underneath his armpits. And I told him that, you know, I was going to try to pick him up a little. And uh, if you feel anything, you know, let me know. And then we'd have to try something else. And I said, you know, if, if everything's OK, I'll grab you, pull you up out. You help me a little bit to get him out. So we, we gave it a try, and we pulled him up and out. And uh, we, we drug him out from underneath the boom of the miner and took him out to the, uh, the last open cross gun. And he was, you know, visibly shaken, but no, it didn't show a sign of injury. Uh, about that time, help started arriving from uh, the shift boss came, and he brought several of his general people with him to look the situation over. And uh, the uh, mistake that we made then was uh, we sort of forgot Charlie. You know, he he was still pretty shook up, and uh, we just left him sitting for a while and went back up and started looking at the miner to see what, you know, what we could do to, to straighten it out. And uh, at, uh, by, by that time, we, we, st we walked up to the mine and we were looking around and looking around. And uh, the foreman wanted to ask, uh, the shift boss wanted to ask him, the operator some questions about what had occurred, you know, because we really didn't have the answers. So that's when he came back into mind and we had, we'd left him. So we went out and uh, back up to where we left him in a breakthrough. And uh, he was visibly sick now. I mean, he was, the reality had set in and he just came close to getting it. And uh, the shift boss asked me if I'd take him out in his Jeep and take him outside. And, you know, they asked him if he wanted to go to the hospital or anything and he's, he didn't want to. 
So on the ride out, uh, I asked him, I said, Chaz, I said, what, uh, didn't you, you know, what, what took you so long? Didn't you, you know, see anything happening, you know? And uh, he said that he was so intent on doing the job that he was doing that he really wasn't paying attention to the, uh, the post situation and the roof. And uh, I tried to explain to him that, you know, I had to get out of there. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a canopy over me. I had to go. And he said he understood totally, you know, that you and I did what I had to do. And uh, <laughs> the funny thing was, he said, it, you know, it happened to him so fast that he said he never even saw it happen. And he said, you know, the next thing he knew, he was sitting in the dark. It was just, he said, and you know, the noise of the, the, the roof breaking up was really loud, and he never heard it. I mean, he, he said he just, all of a sudden, he was in a dust-filled situation and in the dark. And he said that was good, that it happened that way, because if he would have realized what was happening, he would have tried to get out and run, and then he definitely wouldn't have made it. Uh, the bad thing was that uh, as uh, later on, after I got him outside, uh, the roof came in three more times as they were trying to pull the miner out. It kept it kept coming in, and uh, you never realize how you put yourself in jeopardy when you. Because, you know, the mind, it kept coming in back further out in the intersection. And we'd all been standing there just moments before or minutes before or whatever. And uh, it just was totally unstable and you really couldn't tell. I mean, it, 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 like I said, it came in, I think, three other times before they got uh, the miner back and cleared. How much uh, supporting did you and the uh, face boss uh, do at at the time you were trying to dig the minor operator out? None. Uh, we thought, and, and I, I don't actually uh, really believe that we even gave it much thought to post around the lip. Uh, our, our primary thought was to get in and get him out, you know, see what kind of shape he was in, if we could help him. Uh, in an emergency situation like that, I don't know if you always think, I, a lot of times you just do. And uh, I, I, I can't say that we ever gave it a thought to post that up. Uh, maybe if we had been, you know, instructed or that would have been drilled into us that, you know, you never uh, go under an unsupported roof, even in a situation like that, perhaps we might have uh, uh, gave it thought. But to me, it just seemed like it was a natural reaction just to, to go and try to save your buddy. If you had thought to do that, where were the posts? How much time would it have taken to support that lip to do what you could do to make the place safer before you crawled in? Well, uh, we unloaded our, the way we used to do it in retreat sections was that uh, we always had posts unloaded in basically every entry, we'd stack them along the ribs. So uh, they were always nearby, 100 feet or no more than that. Uh, and perhaps to set three or four posts or to get three or four jacks and, and put up along that lip, it might have been, you know, maybe it wouldn't have taken that long. Maybe it would only taken a couple minutes. And as it turned out, we had more than, you know, a couple minutes. We had plenty of time. We could have done it, but uh, we didn't even give that a thought, I don't think. Weren't thinking. No, just reacting. 